We bought 35 acres on top of a mesa in Colorado in hopes of building our dream home ourselves and spending more time as a family. Currently, our family of eight and our handful of animals are living in a fifth wheel. To make life a little more comfortable during what we know will be a long construction process, we're not just living in, but renovating this fifth wheel. We started on one end and we're working our way to the other end. We already tackled the kids' bunk rooms and also put in a laundry closet totally revamped the kitchen and next up is the dining area sit back while we share with you how we totally transformed this area to fit our family's needs when we first got the fifth wheel we had this little tiny table that we could squeeze the kids around mix matching chairs and then also this not so comfy futon that folded out into a bed it just felt so dark in here with the wood the wall panels We've got these beefy window dressings, and then you gotta love the wallpaper. So essentially, we've pulled everything out, started painting the walls white and the trim white, and we're ready to really just make this space work for us. We wanna brighten the area, gain more storage, a bigger table, more seating for everyone. Is it impossible? We'll see. One of the first things we're gonna do is build this platform so that we can insulate our slide and run some electrical. This is a waterproof cable that it comes in from the outside of the slide and then it goes into this box and then converts it to Romex. So then Romex comes over, connects to this outlet, and then it goes up over top of the slide and over to this. I just disconnected it, but this was connected to this outlet and then this runs up to the switch and then from the top of the switch it goes up to this light. We're gonna get rid of the power supply that's coming in from overhead. We're just gonna tuck this back in here because it's not gonna be connected to anything. It's just a dead line. This will be moved to the outside of our seating area so that we can use it over here. We're gonna have a chair that needs to plug in because it's electric. So I'm gonna move this outlet to the back and then I'm gonna run all my electrical through the floor and one outlet will be here in a stem wall on the back side of the seating for the dining area and then that will also have USB ports on it so that we can charge devices and then from here it'll run back over and repower that outlet and the light. have a self-contained box that don't require an additional box inside of the wall so all we need to do is connect we just put this cover on and this closes it off like it's in a box we were so hopeful that we could squeeze this in but we had to unscrew a couple of the boards Now that the platform is in, we're ready for flooring. We'll be doing booth style seating. So we will just put flooring up to where the benches will hit and then the benches will just overlap the flooring about two inches.
These cabinets were sturdy but kind of problematic and broken up with the dividers. The end cabinets were angled and then the center cabinet came down too far and would be in the way of people seated at the table. The divider pieces had cutouts underneath for the window treatments and would just be hard to finish nicely. So we decided to remove them and rebuild. With the cabinets pulled out, now we can get the same faux shiplap on the slide ceiling that we've done throughout the rest of the RV. Jeff hits his head constantly. During the reconstruction of the cabinets, we had some crazy winds throwing materials and all kinds of dust, but we had lots of work to do, so we broke out the goggles and kept at it and recycled whatever materials we could. Jeff is building a stem wall to go between the dining booth and our massage chair. We'll be running electrical through this wall for an additional outlet. We wanted to be able to utilize the space under our booth seating for storage, so Jeff is making drawers. These drawers will house kids' books, toys, our vacuum, extra dining chairs, and some larger appliances and random tools that will be nice to have easy access to. For more details on the construction of the booth and drawers, check out our video description for a link to that video.
There are also links in our description for this chessboard that Jeff built and all about how he integrated it into our butcher block tabletop. For our cushions, we went to our local home improvement store and picked up some 24 inch by 72 inch by 3 inch foam pad. We doubled it up and cut it to size. We had days and days of crazy wind during this project, so keeping the foam from blowing away was quite the feat. We chose outdoor upholstery fabric that will hold up to our crazy crew in some neutral colors. Each cushion cover has a zipper so we can easily remove and pop them in the washing machine as needed. To avoid blocking half of our view out the window with the window casings and blinds like they were before, we opted to reinstall only the blinds and to do so upside down. So, did we do it? Did we accomplish all the goals we had for this area? Brighter, more storage, more seating, larger table? I'd say yes. Even if this stage of the renovation felt like it took forever. Life, weather, shipping delays, and health issues all prolonged this renovation time after time. And we are so happy it's finally completed. When designing, we always aim to maximize our use of space and consider all potentials and versatility. We've customized small spaces before, but the scales and limitations that RVs tend to present have put our creativity and passions 
to the test. Much like how we were able to reclaim some of our counter space in our kitchen remodel, we have found a way to create this space that is somehow large enough for a family of eight to freely dine together and lounge if we want to and do our homeschooling, all while also having easy access to a plethora of storage for those awkward shaped and larger items that don't always have a place to go or they're an eyesore or you constantly are moving them around to do whatever you need to do. And you know, there's never enough outlets or places to plug in all the devices. Our favorite function of this space is probably the table booth combo and how it converts into a couch or an additional sleeping area. Some may say we've really lost the luxury of space like we had in our three-tier theater room that we built in the old house, but honestly, we always ended up cuddled up anyway. And if there's anything that we've learned from small space living, it's that you grow closer by physically having to be closer. What's going on? And of course, it took our kids little to no time to realize another great use of this new space. Hit subscribe so we can continue sharing our crazy journey of family, DIY, small space dwelling, and eventually building our forever home. Even with all of its challenges, it's still so worth it. <laughs>